Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Jessie Kate Creates. I am Jessica. Um, this month I am a guest artist for the April 2024 sheet load of cards from Call Me Crafty Al. So I will be sharing the cards I made with that sheet load. Um, but before we get into that, I know a lot of you guys who watch this channel are already familiar with sheet load. But for those of you who aren't, I want to give you a really quick breakdown. So Sheetload of Cards is a free monthly card layout made by Alicia, known as Call Me Crafty Al here on YouTube. So each month she shares a free sheet load of cards that shows you how to take usually two to three pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and turn it into anywhere from six to 12 cards. Sheet load is absolutely fantastic and I love it. It is great if you're a beginner. It's great if you struggle with making your own card layouts. If you have a stash of pattern paper, you're trying to work your way through. It's great for that. That's personally why I love sheet load. Um, but they're just absolutely wonderful designs that you can use to make your cards and they're free. So like how much better does it get than that, right? Use the hashtag SLCTAPR2024. That will take you to a list of all of the videos and inspiration created by the Sheetload Collaboration Design Team. So I highly encourage you to check out that hashtag after you finish watching this video. I'll have it linked in the description box below. Also in the description box below the video, there will be a link that shows you how you can get your sheet load for free each month. So also be sure to check that out as well. So for the April sheet load of cards, I decided to make Christmas cards because it is never too early to start preparing for the holiday cards. Now I happen to be using the Cozy and Bright paper pad from Pebbles. This is an older paper pad. Um, I've had it in my stash for a really long time now and I'm just trying to work my way through it and finish it up. So I had a ton of scraps to use and lucky for me, most of those scraps were sized perfectly for this sheet load. So let's throw it back to past Jessica really quick to show you what I was working with. Uh, but you can see I have all of these scraps here and they are a perfect size for cutting up to make this particular sheet load. And I have gone ahead and paired up the papers for each pair you see here. I'll be able to make two cards and I have four pairs. So I will be making a total of eight cards just like the sheet load calls for. This paper is super fun because I hope you guys can see that it has these gorgeous little glitters on it. And this one is so cute with the poinsettias and candy canes. And then this one has the cute little mushrooms. So one of the things, one of the reasons I'm able to do this is because with the sheet load, in addition to giving you, you know, the full cutting guide, she also gives you the dimensions that you need if you just want to make like a couple individual cards. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today because obviously none of these are full 12 by 12s. So I can't use those cutting guides, but I can use the dimensions to cut these down to the size that I need them to be. And it's also really fun when you use scraps because you will get a little bit more variety in your cards. So in addition to using these scraps, I also have some other pieces from this collection. I have some of these cut apart, or not cut aparts, stickers still left over. And then I have a ton of these, it's like a cut apart sheet that I cut down. So I have sentiments um, and I have little tags and just a lot here. So I think I'm gonna try to use some of this up on these cards um, just so I can keep working my way through the end of this collection. So that's the plan. Let's fast forward to future Jessica to see what oh, I ended up making. I wanted to share one other thing I decided to do for these cards with you guys. So I went ahead and cut out all my pieces. Um, I cut out some vellum for, for these pieces for the backer. I decided I wanted to use vellum so I cut that out and I went ahead and I put all these, I adhered these all together so they're ready to go. Um, but then I decided it would be really fun since one of the papers has glitter on it and the stickers I want to use for this project. I hope you can see this. They have all that glitter on them. I decided I wanted to add glitter somewhere else on the card too. And I thought the edges of the vellum would be really fun to do that. Initially, I was taking the glue bottle and kind of putting it along the edge, but I was actually really struggling with that. That was kind of hard for me. Um, so I'm going to show you what I decided to do instead. Um, oh, and also, 
This is the glitter I'm using. It's in my, it was in my stash. It's very old. I'm pretty sure it's from AC Moore, which doesn't even exist anymore. But I went ahead and I put some of it in a little tray. This is a tray from the dollar store. I use it for lots of different things, but it was perfect for this because the little piece I'm adding glitter to was just the right size to fit in there. So I just put some in that little tray to help me out. Um, and now I'm gonna show you what I've been doing to make it easier to add glitter to this. So I just take my glue. Today I happen to be using Art Glitter Glue, but really you can use any wet glue you wanna use. I'm just putting a generous amount onto my glass mat trying to use my glass mat more because I used to just like put scrap paper down all the time and for some stuff you do need scrap paper but like for this you don't and I hope you can see I'm just kind of dipping the edge into this glue and just gives me a tiny little bit of glue right on the edge and this for me was a lot easier and a lot faster than trying to use my glue bottle um, to get those edges. And then once I have glue on all of those, I just grab my tray and dip in all the edges into the glitter. Just like that. Super duper easy. And then I just give it a little tap to get rid of some of that excess glitter. Ooh, now this one, this happens sometimes. You can see some of that glitter. Can you see? it pushed the glitter push to the glue and for that I just use the end of a paintbrush and kind of push it back smooth it back use it to take it off and then I'll just whoop, wipe it on a paper towel you don't have to do this part though if you like the way it looks with the kind of glitter overlapping the edge you could totally leave it like that and maybe for some of these I will I don't know but for some of them I did want to clean it up so there doesn't that look pretty? It'll look a little bit different. The glitter will look a little bit different once the glue dries. Okay, so we're back. These have dried. Now I'll show you what they look like. Can you see all that sparkle? It's so... I don't know if the camera is really picking it up that well. But in person, oh, it's so sparkly and pretty. Okay, so now let me show you the final cards, how they all turned out. Oh, one thing I don't think I showed you, so I'll just show you really quick. For the ovals on my cards, I used 110 pound cardstock and I cut out ovals using the Hero Arts Infinity nesting die. I just picked out a die that matched the dimensions on the sheet load pretty closely. And for the sentiment on the cards, I cut out this sweet little banner. Um, I just looked through my stash for an interesting shape and I happened to find this banner in one of my older die sets. Um, and then for the sentiment, it's actually from an old Stampin' Up! set called Festival of Trees. And I really was just looking for a sentiment that fit on this thin little die cut and that one worked. So I just stamped it in a red that kind of matched the red in my pattern papers. So for these, I popped up the pattern paper that we cut in half. I went ahead and popped that up. I hope you can see that, that it is popped up. I also popped up the oval. I thought that was really cute. And I just used the stickers to create a bunch of little seams on my ovals that I thought worked with the cards. And then I put the sentiment at the very bottom of each one. For the inside of the cards, I took the other half of my sentiment for lots of joy at Christmas. I added that to the inside of the card and I just took a leftover strip of pattern paper and put that at the bottom of the card, y'all already know if you've watched my channel that is probably my favorite way to decorate the inside of my cards so like I said I had um, two sets of like papers um, for each of the pairs that I put together I thought they turned out really well these two might be some of my favorites the collection had this really sweet deer in it that I thought was so much fun And I don't know if you can see it very well in person, the slight bit of glitter on these cards shines so well and picks up the slight bit of glitter in some of the different stickers. I know the camera struggles to pick that up sometimes, but 
in person, it did turn out looking really, really wonderful. I also really enjoyed that because I was using scraps, I could get a lot of different looks with my cards. You know, I think this card maybe looks a little bit more traditional, while this card looks more like fun and bright and whimsical. And because I was using scraps, even though each card has the same layout, they all have a little bit of a different feel. So if you don't have full sheets of 12 by 12, you can definitely still use a sheet load um, by using up some of those scraps that you have like I did here. And this is the last one. I actually made this card first and it was before I decided to pop up the um, square that we cut in half. Um, so it's flat on this one. But after I made this one, I decided it would be really fun to pop that up. So as you saw, I did that on all the other cards. Now, because I did put foam tape behind the square and also behind the sentiment, it does have two layers of foam tape, but I think I could probably mail these cards just fine, which is probably what I'll do. I'll probably send these um, to some of my family and friends when the holidays draw closer. So those were the cards. Those were the eight cards I made with the sheet load for April 2024. Did you guys have a favorite card from the ones I made? Do you plan on making a sheet load with this card? Have you already? Let me know in the comments down below and also be sure to look in that description box for the link so that you can get sheet load for free and check out the other videos from the members of the sheet load collaboration team. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.